Chapter 39, Forbidden Money-Raising Methods. Lust of Appetite and Love of Pleasure, the Wrong Money-Raising Appeal. To see the churches of our day encouraging feasting, gluttony, and dissipation by the suppers, fairs, dances, and festivals gotten up for the purpose of gathering means into the church treasury. Here is a method invented by carnal minds to secure means without sacrificing. Such an example makes an impression upon the minds of youth. They notice that lotteries and fairs and games are sanctioned by the church, and they think there is something fascinating in this way of obtaining means. Let us stand clear of all these church corruptions, dissipations, and festivals, which have a demoralizing influence upon young and old. We have no right to throw over them the cloak of sanctity because the means is to be used for church purposes. Such offerings are lame and diseased and bear the curse of God. They are the price of souls. The pulpit may defend festivals, dancing, lotteries, fairs, and luxurious feasts to obtain means for church purposes. But let us participate in none of these things. For if we do, God's displeasure will be upon us. We do not propose to appeal to the lust of appetite or resort to carnal amusements as an inducement to Christ's professed followers to give of the means which God has entrusted to them. If they do not give willingly for the love of Christ, the offering will be in no case acceptable to God. Review and Herald, November 21, 1878. The Church is Desecrated when money is raised for religious purposes, to what means do many churches resort? To bazaars, suppers, fancy fairs, even to lotteries and like devices. Often, the place set apart for God's worship is desecrated by feasting and drinking, buying, selling, and merrymaking. Respect for the house of God and reverence for His worship are lessened in the minds of the youth. The barriers of self-restraint are weakened, selfishness, appetite, the love of display are appealed to and they strengthen as they are indulged. Testimonies, Volume 9, page 91. How are unbelievers impressed? And what impression is made upon the minds of unbelievers? The holy standard of the word of God is lowered into the dust. Contempt is cast upon God and upon the Christian name. The most corrupt principles are strengthened by this unscriptural way of raising means. And this is as Satan would have it. Men are repeating the sin of Nadab and Abihu. They are using common instead of sacred fire in the service of God. The Lord accepts no such offerings. All these methods for bringing money into his treasury are an abomination to him. It is a spurious devotion that prompts all such devisings. Oh, what blindness! what infatuation is upon many who claim to be Christians. Church members are doing as did the inhabitants of the world in the days of Noah, when the imagination of their heart was only evil continually. All who fear God will abhor such practices as a misrepresentation of the religion of Jesus Christ. Review and Herald, December 8, 1896. Giving for Selfish Considerations in professedly Christian gatherings, Satan throws a religious garment over delusive pleasures and unholy revelings to give them an appearance of sanctity, and the consciences of many are quieted because means are raised to defray church expenses. Men refuse to give for the love of God, but for the love of pleasure and the indulgence of appetite for selfish considerations they will part with their money. It is because there is no power in the lesson of Christ upon benevolence and in his example and the grace of God upon the heart to lead men to glorify God with their substance that such a course must be resorted to in order to sustain the church. The injury sustained to the physical, mental, and moral health in these scenes of amusement and gluttony is not small, and the day of final reckoning will show souls lost to the influence of these scenes of gaiety and folly. It is a deplorable fact that sacred and eternal considerations do not have that power to open the hearts of the professed followers of Christ to make free will offerings to sustain the gospel as attempting bribes of feasting and general merriment. 
It is a sad reality that these inducements will prevail when sacred and eternal things will have no force to influence the heart to engage in works of benevolence. The plan of Moses in the wilderness to raise means was highly successful. There was no compulsion necessary. Moses made a grand feast. He did not invite the people to scenes of gaiety, dancing, and general amusement. Neither did he institute lotteries or anything of this profane order to obtain means to erect the tabernacle of God in the wilderness. God commanded Moses to invite the children of Israel to bring the offerings. Moses was to accept gifts of every man that gave willingly from his heart. These free will offerings came in so great abundance that Moses proclaimed it was enough. They must cease their presence, for they had given abundantly more than they could use. Satan's temptations succeed with professed followers of Christ on the point of indulgence of pleasure and appetite. Clothed as an angel of light, he will quote scripture to justify the temptations he places before men to indulge the appetite, and in worldly pleasures which suit the carnal heart. The professed followers of Christ are weak in moral power and are fascinated with the bribe which Satan has presented before them, and he gains the victory. How does God look upon churches that are sustained by such means? Christ cannot accept these offerings because they were not given through their love and devotion to him but through their idolatry of self. 